Hello. The name of this paper is Pareto Improving Data Sharing. My name is Ronen Gradwal, and this is joint work with Moshe Tenenholtz. So in our modern economy, uh, data sharing between firms is a key driver of data-driven innovation. In fact, the European Commission's strategy for data specifically calls for investment in such data sharing tools. Furthermore, within private industry, cloud providers have built the infrastructure for such data sharing. This presents a bit of a challenge. On the one hand, we would like data sharing to benefit individuals and society as a whole. On the other hand, firms should have incentives to share data with one another. And so data sharing should be beneficial to them as well. Our questions are, is data sharing necessarily a zero sum game where one side of the market benefits at the expense of the other side? Or can data be shared in a way that benefits all market participants? In this paper, we study these questions within the classic hoteling model. There are two firms with heterogeneous data who engage in imperfect competition over a set of consumers. Previous work has looked at data sharing within this model with the result that in some specifications, data sharing benefits consumers but harms firms. In other specifications, data sharing benefits firms but harms consumers. The difference is that people here have looked only at full data sharing versus no data sharing. In our paper, in contrast, we're interested in partial data sharing, where firms share some, but not necessarily all of their data with each other. We show that if this is possible, then there exist data sharing mechanisms that are Pareto improving. They increase firm profits and at the same time, increase every consumer's welfare. Furthermore, within the class of Pareto improving mechanisms, we identify one mechanism that maximizes firm profits and another one that maximizes consumer welfare. A few words about the related literature. There are many papers studying imperfect competition also in the hoteling model. I've listed a couple of surveys on the slide here. There are also papers that study data sharing within a hoteling model. For example, Jens and co-authors, as well as Browlin, study such data sharing. And these are the results I alluded to before, where data sharing sometimes benefits one side of the market at the expense of the other, and sometimes it's exactly the other way around. In terms of modeling, our paper is most closely related to work on data sale in the hoteling model, in particular, this paper of Montes and co-authors. And finally, there are several other papers that study data sharing in a context of imperfect competition, in slightly different models. I've listed a few of them here. Uh, Moshe and I also have another paper along these lines. So let me give you a few details about the model that we're using. So the classic hoteling model, there are two firms, A and B, and they're located at either end of a unit interval. These firms sell identical goods, which they can produce at zero marginal cost, just for simplicity. And each firm is going to set what's called a uniform price for the goods that it sells. The market also has consumers, and these consumers are assumed to be uniformly distributed across this unit interval. Each consumer is going to choose one of the two firms from whom to purchase a good. The consumer's utility is going to depend on the price that they pay for the good, as well as the distance between the consumer and the firm whose good it chose to purchase. As an example, if a consumer is located at a point, point theta on this unit interval, and suppose the consumer buys from firm A at price P, then the utility of the consumer is going to be V, which is the benefit of consuming the good, minus P, which is the cost, the price that they pay, minus T times the distance between theta and A. T here is the transportation cost, and it's just a parameter of this model.
Now in the standard setup, there are two stages. First, firms simultaneously set their uniform prices. We we'll call them PA and PB. And then each consumer chooses a firm and makes a purchase. There's a unique equilibrium here in which the firm's prices are equal to T, which is the parameter of the transportation cost. Furthermore, each consumer in this equilibrium buys from the firm that it's closer to. So half buy from A and the other half buy from B. Our setup is a little different because we have, our firms have additional information about the consumers. In particular, we're going to assume that for some of the consumers, one or both firms know the consumer's exact location and not just the distribution on the line. For consumers whose locations are known exactly, a firm can offer a personalized price that's tailored specifically to that consumer. And this overrides the uniform price. All other consumers whose locations are not known by the firm are offered the firm's uniform price, PA and PB, like in the standard model. Now to model this additional information that firms have, we're going to suppose that instead of one unit interval, where all consumers are distributed, there are actually four intervals, each one of unit length. There's going to be an interval SA, which is consisting of consumers whose location only firm A knows. There's SB, which is the set of consumers whose location only firm B knows. There's S empty set, which consists of consumers about whom neither firm has any data. And SAB, the consumers about whom both firms have location data. Now for simplicity, we're going to assume that consumers are evenly spread across all these segments, um, but this is not an important assumption for our result. Now what's a data sharing mechanism? Okay, very simply, a data sharing mechanism specifies a set of consumers on SA whose locations A will share with B, and a set of consumers on SB whose locations B will share with A. So just as an example, you can think of the mechanism that involves no data sharing, okay? nothing happens. Or the mechanism that involves full data sharing, where A shares all of SA with B and B shares all of SB with A. You could also think about a mechanism where one of the firms shares only part of the segment with the other firm. So here's the order of events in our model. First, firms are going to exchange data with a data sharing mechanism. Then they're going to simultaneously announce uniform prices, PA and PB. Then a consumer is going to arrive at the market, chosen at random from the distribution of consumers. And those firms who know the consumer's location, whether it's in their own data or they had it shared from the other firm, those firms are going to offer a personalized price. It's going to be specific to that consumer and the location theta of that consumer to override the uniform price. After that, the consumer chooses which firm to buy from and payoffs are realized. Now, actually, there are two effects of this data sharing mechanism. The first is the direct effect, which is a firm that has obtained new data, new location data about some consumers can now offer more personalized prices to those consumers. And that affects the prices and the profits of both firms in equilibrium. But there's also an indirect effect, which is that data ch sharing changes the set of consumers to whom the uniform price applies because more consumers are now getting the personalized price. And this might change the equilibrium price, equilibrium uniform price, and hence also equilibrium profits and welfare. So let's look at the baseline in our model with no data sharing. So it turns out that in the unique equilibrium with no data sharing, firms have uniform prices that are two thirds times T. Interestingly, on SA, for example, Consumers whose locations are less than five sixths buy from A, whereas only the last one sixth buy from B. Now, the reason that's not an even split is because remember on SA, firm A has data about the exact location of all these consumers. And so it's able to 
compete better for those consumers than firm B who doesn't have this data. That's why most consumers buy from A and only a small fraction buy from B. Of course, on SB, it's the other way around. Most buy from B and only a small fraction buy from A. And observe that in this equilibrium, many consumers buy from the firm that's farther away and not the closer firm. Now, what happens if firms were to share all their data with each other? So it turns out that here in the unique equilibrium, prices are, uniform prices are much lower. They're five over 16 T. And now each consumer does buy from the closer firm. So consumers here are gonna be better off, but firms are gonna be worse off than under no sharing. In particular, consumers are better off because all of them are now buying from the closer firm. So they're wasting less in their transportation cost. Furthermore, uniform prices are lower, so they're paying less. Firms are worse off because the uniform prices are lower. Okay, so they're getting less of a profit. So here we've shown that full data sharing, while beneficial to the consumers, is actually harmful to the firms. And so they're not incentivized to engage in full data sharing. So we now turn to our main result, one of our main results, which is the existence of a Pareto improving data sharing. And just as an example, let us consider the following data sharing mechanism. Suppose that instead of, instead of sharing all the data that firm A has, A only shares the locations of SA consumers who are located on some sub-interval, in particular, the sub-interval from one-sixth to one-third. And B shares the locations of SB consumers that are located between two thirds and five sixths. Okay, so they're sharing only part of the data they have and not all of it. Here's a proposition that we prove in the paper. This mechanism is Pareto improving relative to no sharing. It increases firm profits and it increases every consumer's welfare. Furthermore, out of all the Pareto improving mechanisms, this is one that's optimal for the firms. So here's some intuition for why this mechanism works. So it turns out that with this particular mechanism, the uniform prices are the same as under no sharing. Furthermore, here's an example about what happens on, with consumers on SA. Those between zero and two thirds buy from A and the last one third buy from B. Notice this is better than what happens with no sharing, whereas five sixths and one sixth. Now this benefits consumers because more of them are now purchasing from the closer firm. So they're paying less in transportation costs. It also benefits firms because uniform prices are the same, firms don't lose on the uniform prices. And because more consumers buy from the closer firm, firms are better able to extract surplus through personalized prices. So both the consumers and the firms benefit from this kind of data sharing. I don't have time to go into the more details, um, but let me give you a couple more results that we have in the paper. First, in addition to identifying the firm optimal Pareto improving mechanism, we also identify the consumer optimal Pareto improving mechanism. In addition, we also show that our insight on the existence of a Pareto improving mechanism holds for general distributions of consumers, not just a uniform distribution, that's just particularly convenient to work with. One final word, um, just a quick recap. So our main insight in this paper is that data sharing need not be a zero sum endeavor. And that when it's done correctly, it can increase firm profits and consumer welfare. In other words, it can be Pareto improving. So thank you very much for your attention and I'm happy to, to get your questions. <laughs>